Thanks for joining me, folks. In this video, I will be assembling the Authenticit Spitfire Mark IX flight stick. Well over 100 people have already built this flight stick, and many more are partway through a build and have joined our Discord community. And I take my hat off to all of you because these trailblazers built their flight sticks by following my original videos recorded over a period of around four months, during which I made several design changes which made life a little more difficult than it needed to be. So, in this video, I have finally consolidated and edited all those videos to cut out the old, outdated steps and put everything into a proper order. If you are new to Authenticit though, I would still recommend that you build one of our simpler controls first, such as the elevator trim wheel. It uses the same techniques as I use here, but it is simpler and quicker, and a really great confidence builder. Then I'd recommend the throttle quadrant, and finally this flight stick. I mentioned that this video is a compilation of five previous videos, and I've done my best with editing to avoid discontinuities, but you will see the odd change of background or color of printed parts, so, so don't be put off by that. Authenticit is a freeware project. We're creating flight controls for a wide range of aircraft with an initial focus on vintage warbirds, followed by vintage and classic general aviation. We're harnessing the power of 3D printing in conjunction with high quality but low cost components like hall sensors and sealed bearings. All flight controls can be assembled at your kitchen table with no workshop tools, no soldering and no metal work. You can source the parts yourself or third parties are providing kits of all the hardware as well as 3D printed parts. Okay, the job in hand is to build a Spitfire flight stick starting with the spade grip. So we have some 3D printed parts, we have the spade handle, parts to make the brake lever, and parts to make the fire button, and that's all the 3D printed stuff. We'll leave that here, that's going to take pride of place, and we have some some hardware. I'll explain that as we go through. And a little bit of wiring, which I will explain as I come to it as well. So let us begin. We will start by putting in the bearings that will guide the brake lever rotation. So these just press in. Okay, that's one, and then the other one. That presses in as well. I'll just push that through. There we go. So that's in there. Now the this is a handy thing, by the way. It's just a bit, a PH two bit, and a three D printed handle. I find it quite useful for quickly fastening stuff so I will provide the design for that as well. Right we're also going to put one piece of the fire button on now which is the back of it. Let's get this the right way around it's not that way it is that way. So that requires an 8mm screw. They're all Phillips head so we'll just put that in there Pretty strong. And next we will feed some wires through. So two pairs of wires. We have for the fire button, black, green, yellow, and for the hall sensor on the brake lever, red, blue, white. I always use red, blue, white as a standard colours for a hole sensor until I have more than one hole sensor and uh, have to start doubling up. But just the one in the spade handle, so it will be red, blue, and white. And uh, these will be the wires for the fire button. So let's thread them through. Now, 
there's a hole here and a hole here and you need to go through the bottom because there's a little bit of, it'll just catch if you try and send it through the top first so I find the best way just twist the ends together and then just thread them in and at some point we can see them popping out here there we are so we'll just fish those out That's the fire button wires. Now the brake lever wires. Same again. A little bit of a twist. Thread them through. Not going as far this time. They should pop out quite easily and quickly. There we go. So that's that side of things. We'll assemble the fire button into the case as before. In fact, you should find it goes in slightly easier. In fact, yep, yeah, there's one dowel in already. And the other one, there you go. Simple as that. In with this little peg. That's in place nicely now. And you can now see that the button, as well as rocking, slides up and down a bit. Next with the neoprene. I'm using a slightly shorter length. It doesn't go quite as far across as before. And the reason for that is that as well as the neoprene providing resistance against a rocking action, the whole neoprene now has to be compressed when you press in the center. And there's a bit of resistance on that, so just to give your thumb a bit of an easier time, I'm using a slightly shorter piece. So, on that goes dead center or close enough that's done now when you assemble this I now recommend that you put this fire case back onto the spade before you start then slide on the fire case front piece of the rear and just line that up so that you've got it the right way around to start with don't forget the wire press you don't want to remember that after you've crimped everything. So have that sat there all good and ready. Also, let's get this lined up in the right way so that when we're finished, we can just pop it on. And you can see now it's the wrong way around. So we'll set it the right way around and just sit it down like that. Now we're going to fit in the Omron tact switches. This will be at the bottom and this will be at the top. So fire button at the top. Um, machine guns at the top and what I've done this time I've flattened out the two inner lugs of the tack switch at the bottom and I've flattened out one of the lower lug if you hold it that way the one underneath I flattened that one out and then the upper one I bent that down because that's going to be the one place that's going to have a little bit of pressure connection the other ones which are flattened three of them are going to have a ferrule on them. We also have a little piece of 0.5 mil copper wire and it's 20 mil long. Okay let's wire this up. We'll start with the ground which is going to join the two pins at the top or on the left hand side the way that is oriented. We'll slide a ferrule over the black ground wire and what I've now found best is to slide the copper in at this stage and get that get the two of those on now slide that over the left hand pointing up of these pins now that's a little bit snug so just work that on so we've got all three bits inside the ferrule I think we're there yep now if I just 
put that in the case for a second, just hold it there, sit that down, and then we'll get a ferrule on the green which is going to be the cannon, and we'll slide that onto the lower of these two, okay that's on, and now let's just press that copper needs to be underneath the black wire. Press that down. Okay, they're all in. Now we crush the ferrules and make a good connection. Pretty good. Okay. Now I kept the yellow machine gun wire out of the way while I did that, and we just now need to thread on a ferrule for that. Okay, so remember we had a bent pin there and a smooth pin here. So this goes on the smooth pin. If I know what's slightly easier, I would say is let's put the Omron in and now slide it on and then that channel will hold the yellow wire for us a little bit and now we can crush that ferrule that felt pretty good that's pretty crushed and now you can see that the copper wire has been pressed down by that sprung pin Okay, we're there. Let's pop this in. You get a nice click there that just has a slide over the wire press. Just do that carefully, nothing should fly out. go and then the case back okay now it's just time to pop in the M3 countersunk screws there we go now if you correctly lined up the case at the start you should find that it slots perfectly over the spade grip with the thumb recess on the left, which it does. We'll just slide through the wires. Very good, that fits correctly. Pop in the 20 mils at the back. And now we have machine gun, cannon, both. Okay, that's one half done. We're halfway there. Let us put a fire, a uh, brake lever in. So we've got the bearings in. Now we're going to use a whole sensor. Now there's a, there's a little trick here. This cube magnet has to go in exactly the right way and there is a north and south and uh, you just wouldn't know. So that's why you need another magnet that has a clear north-south on it. So that's the south, so now we know which is the north. Take a screwdriver and make sure it doesn't flip and lift it away. Okay, so now I know where the north is. The north's at that end. Now the north, with all of these authenticate designs, wherever a cube magnet has to go in, you'll see a dimple. I hope that's clear enough there. There's a dimple there and that's where the north has to go. So I just put that in there. Okay, so that's the right way. And Let's hope that the magnet doesn't fly out now as it's attracted to the bearings. Nope, that's good. Okay, so now we have the, the magnet in place. Now to stop that falling out, there's a screw, 3D printed screw. And this is why you need this little wrench device. To tighten it up.
Okay, good and strong. Right, let's put the uh, let's put the resistance in. Quite a simple technique for this. A piece of three mil bungee. We can snip some off later, so I won't bother making it too pretty right now. That goes in there, and this threads through here. This threads through here. Don't need that now. Right. So let's get loads and loads of tension on and then just get a knot in it. And maybe I'll start the knot. And then I'll get loads of tension in and then I'll slide the knot forward. That's the way. So the knot hides tightly in there, and we have that there. I will right, just snip these off now, make it pretty. Okay, brake lever. Right, we just need to fit the hole sensor in. We have a sensor holder and we have a hole sensor. Now I hope this doesn't snap because I've put it in and taken it out again so many times as I've been developing this. And um, So that's the face of the sensor. We slide it in. Now it's, uh, it doesn't go straight. There's a little bit of a, an angle to where the wires go. So it's kind of useful to give the wires a slight bend like that, just to sort of help them feed. Got it the right way around? Yeah. Right, in it goes. So there's the sensor head in there. And now we have the wires coming out the back. So let's just... And they f go in these channels here. So, how do we connect these without soldering? That's where these things come in. They're very small. And this is how you fit them. Now there's another standard with all of the designs that I make, which is that whenever you have three pins from a whole sensor, the color coding on the back is always from the left, RBW, red, blue, white. That makes life a lot easier in terms of connecting it up properly. So the way to do this is you take this very small tube and you slide it over the end of the wire. Then you push it onto the end of the sensor here and then you press this in to the channel. And it should just press in and have a good grip. And then you can You kind of don't need to sit it on a desk really, you can, it's almost easier just doing it with your fingers in the air. Just presses in like that, right. It'll probably stay in place now because now what I need to do is crush it. Good. And that just crushes it into the plastic and makes a pretty decent joint. Right, RBW, red, blue, white. Next one. One more of these little tiny tubes. Give the wire a good twist, feed it in. Use your fingernail at this point, that should just get it in place. Press it in. Good, and then crush it in. Nice, that's pretty strong in there. Okay. Two thirds, RBW, last one. Okay, we're nearly finished. We now have all three wires in place and they're in the sensor holder. We just need to slide that sensor holder back, slide it into place really. Um, 
Now on the back, if you just look at the profile, there's a little dimple on the side. And the idea of that is the wires will just slot into there and make it easy. And a good technique is just to hold that with your thumb. Make sure none of these wires pop out. I mean they shouldn't, but a, a, you know, a good tug would take them out. And then just slide in the sensor holder like that. And just gently pull these wires through while you do it. A little bit of a gentle easing now. There we go. In they go. Perfect. Everything's still in place. Have a quick look. Make sure nothing has sort of popped out or any strands have strayed across. Now that looks fine. And now we'll just put a cover on. So there is the cover. And we'll just go over like that. And we have a couple of self-tapping screws. They're, uh, our trusty PH2 isn't uh, right for this, but this screwdriver, I think it's PH1, not quite sure, is the right thing. So let's drop one of those in now. And the other one. There it is. Ah, the wrap. I nearly forgot the wrap. This is a nice touch. So let's let's get the wrap on. So it basically just fits. I mean, it's for a tennis or a squash racket, but. Um, I'm pretty lucky, it basically just is the right length. Don't, don't overlap too much as you go round and give it a good old stretch as well. Just to keep it... Keep it fitting closely. Oh wow, a bit more than usual. Bit of black tape to finish that off. Very nice, very nice. And we're going to be adding the angle bracket, which will mount underneath like this. And there is the roll bearing, which will allow the, the roll pivot to, uh, to happen. So those are the parts that are printed and then we have some hardware which I put here so it's a little easier for me to pick these pieces out with my fat fingers. Uh, a bearing, quite a chunky bearing, apparently they're used for washing machines quite a lot and our trusty cube magnets and um, uh, little spring, sensor and uh, a few bits and pieces. Anyway we'll go through them as we encounter them. So first things first, we're going to just have a look at the base of this spade grip because we're going to be screwing some machine screws or bolts into them and they're going to sort of screw in like this. However, I've already uh, prepared this a little bit and I'll show you what I did because what happens is this is printed on the print bed that way up and it means that the very first layer is this, which is why it's kind of shiny and quite clean. But what tends to happen when you print the first layer is it squishes a little bit and uh, the, the diameter of the hole, which needs to be a four millimeter screw diameter, just tends to narrow a fraction on that very first sort of 0.1 mil. So a good trick before you, just early on, is to just open, I mean sometimes you just want to just do that a little bit and just open it out. Um, but then just make sure that you can get the screw in there and it'll be easier to fit later on. We've done that now. 
put my bits there. So the next thing we're going to do is feed the wires through. Now it's going that way and the wires are going to be threaded down these two channels and out the bottom there. Now there's a little trick to this as well. The hole is fairly tight, there's not a lot of spare in there, so what I find works best to avoid the wires catching is feed one wire in, thread it through a little bit, feed another wire in, thread it through a little bit, and then another wire in, and then thread that through a little bit, and then we're feeding all three together. But it means that one will pop out first, rather than all three of them bunching at the end trying to sort of negotiate a little little bend, which there is. A couple of bends in fact. So let's just feed these through. You might kink a little bit sometimes, you just a little bit of back and forth, just slide them back and forth. If you get a little bit of resistance. There we go. So we've got the blue one coming out now. Now if I grab that blue one and just feed some more in, then the blue will help drag everything else through. So let's just do that. We've got the red one starting to appear here. Yep, yeah, we've got the red one out now as well. So let's drag the red and the blue, and that should help pull the white one through. And there it is, there's the white one. So we've got all three wires in there. So let's repeat that on the other side. Just start with one. I'll just show you there what's happening. Start with the one and then add a second one and then the third one and then just feed them through don't have them overlapping each other okay so there's one that went through quite easy okay now I will just straighten these up a little bit okay we're just about there now the final little bit here, as we close the gap up. Okay, so those are the wires threaded through. And we will now fix these, fix the spade to the angle bracket very securely with 20 millimeter M4 countersunk screws, two of them. And for one of them, we can use this trusty 3D printed screwdriver. Nice and quick. The other one, though, I find that the, the space available is a little bit tight to get this 3D printed screwdriver in. So you're going to have to use a, a normal screwdriver. And again, it will have to be a uh, PH2. And that just gives you the... There we go. Absolutely. Strong as houses. Right. Getting there now. So let's turn this over and have a look at the other side. Because this is where the roll bearing will go. And we will be using these pieces here. Let us start with the bearing itself. That sits inside a case, like that, and then this peg will go inside the middle, thread through it. But first I just, I find that it's a lot easier if you just check that this peg seats properly inside the housing at the back of the angle bracket. Just check you know how that goes in and that it does go in, you might need to sort of wiggle it a bit and yeah, that's what we're looking for. Nice and strong. Okay, so we know that that goes in. It doesn't need any tidying up and cleaning off. Let's think about the magnet now. So we're going to use one of our trusty magnets and we have to use the same trick as last time. Oh, everything wants to stick to this today. There it is, there it is. So we want to detect the North Pole again. And we want to use our trick so that the, the blue is the south, so the end of the screwdriver now is the north. 
and as was before there is a tiny dimple on the back of this peg and it's up there and that's where the north should go so I need to just align that up oh, now it jumped a bit and I just feel a little unsure if I've lost it so let's just make sure if you do put it in and think ah right um, is that really right there's a hole all the way through and you can just push it out again so let's just make sure I've got this in right there it is okay so that is that's there We're good now let us put the peg inside the bearing that is a firm fit and before we put the case or the back on it's time to put our hole sensor in now the hole sensor pops in here like that goes through a little bit and then we just bend the pen the pins back into these channels and then just press them down a bit Right, let's put the back of the case on now. Now here's a thing that I've added to the download list. We've got quite a few screws here, and in particular the 6 and the 8, they're pretty similar in size, so I've made this as a quick way, because we don't want any bigger than a 14 mil, that would damage the mag hole, so this, I think this is a 14 mil, and you can see that it perfectly fits there. If I pushed it under the 10, it's too big. So that's a useful thing. And we need another 20 mil M4 countersunk screw and a couple more. I'll just put them in quickly for now. Okay, nice and strong. Great. That is a nice sturdy unit. Now let me just say something about this. This is what I call a Mag Hall 6003. In fact you can see there written on the, the seal it's a 6003. So that's a 6003 bearing. I think this is a Dunlop bearing but this, it's a standard item that costs about a pound. Um, and this entire unit now is quite a useful component that you can put in anything that you want to uh, well like a flight stick or, or something else that you want to have rotation on and with a sensor, know its position. A slight variation of this is the one that is, is more useful because I have another one, which is a 6003F for friction, and that incorporates a friction pad. Now that's a very useful item because we can use that in a trim wheel. Um, actually slightly different in a trim wheel. Um, doesn't use a magnet in the trim wheel. Uh, but a flap handle, very useful. Certainly a throttle quadrant. Um, all three of the levers in a throttle quadrant uh, radiator flaps, um, all sorts of things. So these mag hole units are, are fantastic. You can just drop them in and quickly make a case, design a lever and produce all kinds of uh, useful controls with them. Okay, it's time to wire up this mag hole 6003. There it is again. We're using the standard RBW red blue white wiring and I will in fact I'll just to sort of show you how it's easy it is to take off the uh, the wrapper the, the cable sheath on these um, I'll use these ends which are currently just just cut and uh, unexposed on the wires so we'll start it's an RBW red on the left just a bit of fingernail that's all you need and a twist and then we'll pick one of these up and thread it over the, uh, the cable and we will slide it onto the first of the pins there it is let's just press the there we go very nice press the ferrule into the channel and then crush it into place that's got it. Next one. RBW. Oh, 
Let's just take some off there. A bit more. Give it a twist, thread it on. Onto the end of the sensor leg. And then press it into the channel. That's got it. And then the cable itself should just fit into that channel and just be a, a snug fit. Okay, that's all three. Now those wires will be held even more firmly when they're pressed into the case because they will be pressed down and bolted against the panel underneath and that little bit of, of silicon that's sticking above there will just press snugly and uh, make everything nice and secure. Okay, almost finished. Time to fit that D-peg against the mounting inside of our flight stick. So we know how this should go. It's hopefully a snug fit. Might take a little bit of wriggling to get it. There it is. That's in. The wire collection's building up, isn't it? And then we just need to hold the D peg in shape with a 14 millimeter M4 countersunk machine screw. There it is. Ah, one more thing that I forgot is that we there will be a spring at the bottom of this flight stick and it will provide the resistance, the roll resistance. And the spring will bear against this 3mm dowel pin. And we will be holding that dowel pin in place. It will be slotted into here and then held with this retaining peg plate. Now what you might find is because of the way that this angle bracket is printed, the hole might just be a little bit slightly off the 3 mil that you need and you might find that you can't easily sort of press this peg into it. So I find the easy way to just sort of seat it and make that, make sure that the hole just sort of fits it is put the dowel peg in there and just sort of press it and there you go, that's got it in. So that's held quite nicely in there. And then we can put the spring over and that's then got this retaining plate holding everything in place and that's using two, using two 10 millimeter, let's drop this over there, 10 millimeter long M4 countersunk machine screws. So let's just drop those in. That's good and strong. Brilliant. Okay. So now we can see things coming together. You might notice also that the shape of these tubes is a bit different. I've improved it. You can now run the wires through more easily and also the wires exit to the front instead of the back. Let's talk about tools now. The trusty PH2 Phillips head. Uh, you'll need the PH1 as well. We've got a couple of smaller screws in there. And again, this is just a bit, kind of a cheap thing um, and a 3D printed holder. You'll need a ruler. We need to get some wire lengths just right in this video. So that's a useful thing. A Sharpie, um, an Allen key, just some sort of screwdriver, just for kind of fishing things out. Wire cutters, uh, pliers are optional. They just make things slightly easier, but you can do everything with your fingers. And that's another optional thing, a little bulldog clip, just to help you keep some wires out of the way later. I won't go through all the hardware, like the bearings, as I presume you've got all those ready and, and to hand, but let's have a quick look at the 3D printed parts. We've got the main body, that's the main thing, and a bracket, a plate, which covers over some wires, a retainer, 
which will hold the pitch spring in place. Then we've got the pitch lever, and that's part of that. And then there's another mag hole unit which goes into the pitch. This is a slightly different design than before. It's, it's actually a couple of bearings which sandwich the pitch lever and make sure it's good and sturdy. So we have a couple of parts that hold the bearings there and create that sandwich around the pitch lever. Now I'm going to be cutting the video a bit to keep things flowing, but I'd recommend a good hour for you to build this. There are five steps and I'd recommend a slow patient approach to avoid getting all the wires tangled up. They can go a bit like spaghetti if you're not careful. So these are the five steps. We will be fitting the angle bracket to the body like this. We'll be routing the wires over this bridge. Then we're going to route the wires through the pitch lever. Then we'll add the spring and that sandwich style mag hole. Then we're just going to do a little tidying up and put the lid on. So let's start with step one. We're going to mount the angle bracket to the body. But we'll find it easier first if we take this mag hole off. Mount it to the body and then we'll put the angle bracket on it. So I will remove that now. Now that was something to do slowly and carefully. We don't want to yank these wires out of the sensors. Now we're going to thread these three wires through this little guide on the side here. So start with a couple. Okay, they're through. Now let's slot the mag hole into the base unit. You can see there's a little groove there where the wires can escape from the back. So let's press that in. So that should go in nice and easily. And then we can just carefully pull through a little bit more wire. There we go. And now we need to fix the mag hole unit to the body. For, so for that we need eight mil screws. Take some care here because there are a few times when you can get away with a, a screw that's a different length, but not here. If you put one that's slightly long, you'll damage the unit. So we're going to just test that we've got the 8 mil there. Now before we fit this angle bracket back onto the mag hole unit, just take a look at this D-shaped plug. Because that needs to mesh exactly with the angle bracket. And when you're fitting it, you're going to sort of knock this around a bit. So the thing to watch for, you want the left hand side of it at 9 o'clock. So that's the kind of slope. So make a note of that now. Now we're going to fit the spring to the body. Now the easy way to do this is to take two 20 mil screws, they're kind of oversized, put them through underneath, put your fingers there. Now we're going to put that dowel pin in the slot in the middle. Take this retaining plate and put that over the top of the screws with the flat bit to the bottom. The little curved lug in the middle points towards the mag hole unit. Get that over the top there. Then you can kind of press that down, keep things held, get the thread started. And then with the screws only partially into the retaining plate so that you can lift that plate up and down, you can get some clearance to the top of the dowel pin. And this allows us just to take the roll spring on the end of the angle bracket, push it through there, hold it over the top of the dowel, let it drop, let the retaining plate drop so that you now have the dowel pin held firmly. And you can just let that dangle a bit as you turn things over and tighten up that retaining plate. So that's the spring held in place. And now it's time to mesh the D with the angle bracket. So I'm checking there that the left hand side is on about 9 o'clock and I will hold the angle bracket, just tension it up a little bit. There we go, it's in. And when it's in, you'll see that the gap between the angle bracket and the body is barely a millimetre either side. So now we can put the 14 mil screw back in. That's step one complete. Now we have two sets of wires. 
One set, six wires coming out of the angle bracket. Another set, three wires coming out of the roll sensor. We're going to be running all of these wires along this bridge here. You can see it's shaped like a bridge and in fact you can see there's also a little bridge on top of the big bridge. Now all six wires from the angle bracket are going through that bridge on a bridge. And they're going through in a very particular order. So the order is white, blue, yellow, green, red, black. And we're going to feed all these wires through the bridge on the bridge. Like this. So there we are with all the wires pulled through snugly, but we're going to feed some back because we want some slack here. We need some play to allow the roll action. If you put your ruler here, you want those wires just pushing up, kind of like that. And then we're going to use the Sharpie and we're going to just mark them. And whatever happens now as we route the wires around the, around the bridge here, we don't want to pull any more of that through or we're going to prevent this angle. We're going to be making a few joints along this bridge. To do that we're going to be using these flange headed screws. So in fact let's get all four of these in now. You need the PH1 for this. So let's get that fitted. So that's the four flange headed screws. So let's go left to right on these junction terminals. No change on the left. That's where the reds were joining and that's still going to happen. This is where the ground wires joined. We had the black from the fire button joining with one of the blues. Now this time both the blues, that's the roll mag hole and then later it'll be joined by the pitch mag hole. They get merged with the black. The third junction here is no longer used. And then finally, we still originate a wire here, and we're going to use yellow. So, I will go and make those joints now. Now, I said we can share some ground wires. This black is a ground, and it will be joined shortly by another ground. So for now, we'll just cut this short and fit it to one of the joints. Now we can share these reds as well. We have the red from the angle bracket and a red from the roll lever. Now I've fed the red from the roll lever underneath the bridge so it's not looping around the bridge, it's on this side of the bridge. And we're going to have a third red which will pass on through the pitch lever later on. So we're now going to join three wires and we're going to do that with that furthest flange. So time to cut these short so now we have these three reds. Okay, here we are. So we've joined the red from the roll sensor, from the brake lever, and we've started a fresh red, which will go all the way through. We've joined the ground, the blue ground from the roll, the black from the fire button, and we've got a fresh black and that will go all the way through. And we have the white sensor from the roll. So that's three wires. Then we've got four wires which have come all the way through from the spade. We've got the blue and the white which came from the brake lever and the two fire buttons. So we're going to run those four as a group and that will be group B. And then we're going to run these four as a group and that will be group A. Okay, let's move on to step three, in which we're going to be running these wires through this pitch lever. But first we'll do a little bit of tidying up. Now we have some wires here from the roll lever. They're poking out to the left. Let us feed them back under the bridge. So we've got them under the bridge and out of the way of this area where the pitch spring is going to be. And we're going to do a little bit of tidying here we're going to use these particular wire guides at the top just to keep things tidy. So we can put the oh, little screwdriver is useful here. We can just poke the red one through there 
and the red one we can go through here. Looking good, but for now I'm not going to put these blue and white wires through there. I will put them through the top. I'll also put this red wire through this channel here just to keep that out of the way of everything. Now let's talk about the pitch lever. Here's the pitch lever. Here's the plug. But this plug now screws into the back of this pitch lever, like that. Now when you print it, you might find that you've got a little bit of spread on the filament there and it, it sort of doesn't go in very easily. So before we assemble this, just make sure it does go in easily. And there's a little tool which I've built for you that will just help get that tightened in tightly. Now when it is in, it should be really quite snug there. There shouldn't be any of the thread. In fact, there's a good way of showing it. You can see there, there's no gap between that flattened side, or barely any gap between that flattened side and the base. If you're not getting that, then uh, try and sort of screw it in here. And if you're having some trouble there, you know, maybe even get a, a wrench on it or something. Just gently push past any of the stoppage. Because you need that to go in quite easily later on. Now let's talk about the wires. We're going to mark out nine centimeters. So let's put the nine on there. I need to remember that one. And the same with the other bunch. Okay, it's assembly time. We have group A and group B, and we're going to be threading the group B wires on the right hand side, so it's A, B, and uh, let's start with the B wires. And there is an order, same as before, which is from the left, green, yellow, blue, white. So let's thread that through now. This was always quite an easy one compared to the others. They go in pretty easily. This one goes in nice and easily as well. Okay, there they are. Now the bearing. Thread them through here. Bearing just slots into its case. Now the pitch plug that way round. There we go and I've kept the order. I've still avoided twisting any of the wires. Now it's time to thread the wires through the pitch lever. So we'll start again with group B. If you hold the pitch lever with the plinth underneath, group A will go down the short side, group B will go down the long side. So let's start with group B. Okay there's group B. We thread that into the slots on the back. Now, this is where the 9 centimeter mark is important. We're going to pull this all the way through to the 9 centimeter mark. And no more. Okay, I think I've got that right. Now, keeping the same order, we're going to thread the green, yellow, blue, white through this channel to pop out of that cavity. Now, you won't get all four in at once, so I would suggest putting two in. Okay, there's two, and then the trick I've mentioned before, which is to put the fourth one in, which is the white one, and use the friction of the other two to drag that through, and then, then thread the blue one between number two and number four, and let the friction drag that through. Okay, so there we go. Done. Rinse and repeat. Now if you aren't quite sure about these marks and it's starting to look a bit messy, err on the generous side. It's easier to just cope with a little bit of slack cable inside the body here than to have this cable too short. Okay guys, it's uh, wires down the side again, same as before. Let me say something about this part of the build. Uh, this is proven one of the fiddliest ones uh, during the beta testing. I've managed to thread these through fairly well each time and some of the guys have joined the testing, um, but a couple of the guys really just couldn't get these wires down here very easily and they ended up just to get the job done, they, they split that. Um, 
Make sure you're using this cable. Uh, check the parts list. It's 26 AWG. It's got a silicon wrap. It's about 1.5 millimeter diameter. If you're not using this cable, yeah, you could have some trouble. Now I clipped the video to save time, but I do assure you that went in pretty easily. It's the short side though, the longer side's a bit harder. Okay, nearly done. Yeah, this side is a little bit harder. I've, I've got three of them through. I put the white and the blue through first, then the green, and then I've just threaded the yellow in the middle and I'm just trying to push it. Yep, there we go. There's the yellow coming through now. And there we go. Nice and tidy. Yes, and no twists. Okay, with the new design, the other side of this pitch lever is one of our standard Michael 6003s. So this actually looks pretty identical to the one which is inside the roll bearing. It is slightly different actually, and if you were to put two of these together, you'd find that the footprint of this is just a fraction bigger. And, um, and also, the position of that magnet in relation to that D, that's slightly different as well. So you need to get the right one, you don't want that mixed up with that. And to help you, I've put a ring around the top of the D here. So the one with the ring is for the pitch and the one without a ring is for the roll. So we assemble as usual. We need to know which is north. Okay, that's the north. Let's just carefully take that away. We know where the north is. We can see a dot here. So we just press that in place. Slide that through the bearing. Bearing into the case. Now, I've already put the wires on the back of this particular mag hole. It's the usual RBW, red, blue, white, with the same crimping mechanism. So you can check back to the video for the roll bearing to see how that was done. So now let's just assemble this, hold it down with the 20 mil. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you might actually notice that the front of this case is slightly bigger than the back of this case. In the version that you've got with the downloads, they're the same. and this. Kind of should be the same, but I had this piece lying around and, and it fits. So there's our Mag Hall 6003 and it will mount to the pitch lever. But before we do that, don't leave this one too late or you'll have to take it apart again. We need to fit the spring. So let's fit the spring. Let's put the dowel in there. Let's hang the spring on the end. Retainer, 10 mil. Same as before. Okay, now carefully attach the mag hole to the pitch lever. I say carefully just because we don't want to drag these wires out. If you've fitted those well, they should be pretty sound, but just be careful anyway. You can kind of see where the lip is for the D, so that goes on here. And now we fit a 14 mil screw in there. Now here's a thing that I've added to the download list. We've got quite a few screws here, and in particular the 6 and the 8s, they're pretty similar in size, so I've made this as a quick way, because we don't want any bigger than a 14mm, that would damage the mic hole, so this, I think this is a 14mm, and you can see that it perfectly fits there. If I pushed it under the 10, it's too big, so that's a useful thing. So let's put the 14mm in here, and we can confidently tighten that up strongly. Now. It's time to pull that pitch peg up towards the thread. And now we can tighten up this pitch peg with our pitch peg lever. Okay. Now we can slide the bearing back to the pitch peg. This takes a little bit of time. You just have to do this carefully because there's a bit of friction. I've made a redesign as part of this second version just to solve a problem that was I found kind of inconvenient, I'm sure you would do, and that was this part here, where you've put the plug in, and you're just going to feed the bearing and the, and the slotted case back through the wires. And because the wires were going through the slots in the outside, and then going to 90 degrees and coming out of this bearing hole, it, it was quite fiddly, so I've redesigned it. And <laughs> now it's very easy indeed. And 
Well, basically, you just thread the wires initially right through the hole in the back, and then when you're done, that's when you just need to slide these wires, that's group A at the top there, into the slots, just to sort of keep them tidy and uh, going where you want them. And now, press everything into place. Now you see there's three lugs. The bottom lug fits into a channel. There's a little groove in the bottom here. So just aim for that right now. Okay, that feels like it's in. In fact, one of the tests is that if the lugs are in, you can see all the way through the bottom screw hole. So let us now fit a couple of screws into those bottom holes. Okay, they're in. Now, time just to get the spring in the right place. So we carefully tilt back the mag hole unit, lift up the spring, then we can tuck the spring down here, underneath the bridge. And with the spring held under the bridge, we can put this part threaded M5 bolt right through the center of the body. You can possibly just see that going through the other end of the spring. Now take your Allen key and Okay, that's the part threaded bolt in place. So now we've got a pretty good spring action. Let's just make sure that the sandwich mag hole is pulled back so that we can now put the remaining screws in place. Okay, that's the last one. Nice and secure there. Okay, so that's step four complete, and you'll be pleased to hear, no doubt, that step five is a nice easy one. We're just going to feed these three pitch wires through this slot in the bridge, if that's possible to see just there. Okay, there they are. And those of you watching closely may notice that this white wire is now above the spring. In the clip below, it was below the spring, and what I also sneakily just did was take out this bolt, put the white wire above it, and put the bolt back in again. Okay, it's time to connect up these three wires. So, let's start with the red. The red is another share of these shared positives at the far end. So we will take this out, take our reds out, Add a fourth red, and now just fit all those reds back around there and tighten that up. That's the red. Next, the blue. That blue is going to join these blacks. And now add that blue to the blacks. And finally the white. That white is the one that will join this green down at the end here. So that's the green and the white. Green and white joined up. That is all the wiring connected. Now let's just retidy the bridge. And let's just tidy away all these wires. Any loose loops like this black, if you can just put them through the bridge channels, that will keep them from snagging anything. Everything that crosses the bridge needs to go through these channels, these wire guides. Okay, so now we just have a little bit of slack here. And this is where we make use of these slots and guides. A lot of the wires which go to that lower slot can go into this Okay, it might take you a few minutes, but this is where you should end up. We have no snagging around the pitch spring. We still have our slack here for the roll. No snagging, oh, there's a loose red one. 
let's put that in there. No snagging around the front. And then all of the loose wires which were gathering around this side of the body tucked away inside these channels here. And then you can put a 20mm screw through the side like this. And then we can fit this retaining cap which will just keep everything tidy. And there we are. We're ready to put the lid on. So the lid just slots over like this. 8mm screws on the top is the right sort of length. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. We should now have a very nice roll action and a very nice spring action. Things get a lot quicker now and we're, we're really quite close, but let me just say a couple of things. One, for this side, you really need to be careful those are the eight mils. Any bigger than that, you'll damage the mag hole, which is why this tool is quite useful. 8 mils, quite short really, and uh, you can see that is a correct 8 mil. That's one thing. Second thing, these tiny little ferrules are, um, they're not all created equal. This, this is a good one. It's very cleanly cut. I mean, no doubt it's a long tube and they just kind of chop little pieces off. Nice and clean, so when you're threading some wire through there, that's fine, goes, goes great. But, depending on where you get them from, I've got another one here which is really quite scrappy. You see that rough sort of cut? If you get some like that, I mean, they're not expensive, these things. Um, just just get some new ones. Find a different supplier. Because um, that just makes it so much harder to thread the wire through. It catches on that little burr at the edge there. Okay, let's get back to building this stick. Here's the base box. We're going to fit that. It fits this way round, the wires come out of the RJ socket which is up here and we fit this plinth to that base with 10mm screws. So just be careful not to catch these wires here and then just get these 10mm threaded on. Okay, that's good. Now the dovetail quick release mount. That goes this way round with the open end at the bottom. 8mm screws for this. Almost done now and it's time to connect the RJ45. This is very straightforward. It's simply the same as before. We're going to have group A followed by group B. So it's red, black, yellow, white. I'm stripping a little wire off the silicon. Rather than relying on the teeth of the RJ45 to crush through and cut into the silicon, cut to the wire, uh, I'm now just stripping off a bit of the silicon, doing that here and on the DuPonts. The only thing to be aware of when you do that, if you just look really closely, you see how the teeth are staggered. What you don't want to do is have a long piece of wire that, that strays across and, um, and then makes a little bit of contact with that other tooth that just protrudes into the plastic a little bit there so just be, use short lengths of exposed wire no need to have long lengths and then just crush them through like that and then just give them a good look make sure there's no stray bits okay I'll just press on with that red black yellow white okay that's group A don't mix the yellows up now group B so this way you know you're making contact Okay, they're all in. Have a good look over. Ideally, with a magnifying glass. But I feel pretty good about those. Okay. In it goes. Now you could cut these wires a bit short, but I kind of like to leave the extra length there just in case you have to disassemble something. It just seems like tempting fate to burn your bridges at this stage. So tuck these wires out of the way and then slide the lid on. Just make sure you're not snagging any wires. Now I have some nice black screws to go in the top here. 
And that, folks, is an Authenticate Spitfire Mark IX fighter stick complete. So that concludes this assembly video. You now have a working flight stick. To connect it to your PC and mount it to your desk, you'll also need the Universal Hub and the Authenticate mounting system. And I'll include links to my YouTube assembly videos for those in the description below. If you're looking for the download files or assembly instructions for this flight stick, or if you'd like a link to a third party to purchase an all-in-one hardware kit or a parts kit, just visit Authenticate.org. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these videos.